Hey, it's Neil Parfit here. Welcome to video number 34 of working with the ER301 sound computer. Uh, just an apology in advance for the uh, camera shakes. I cannot, for the life of me, find my tripod, and I think I left it on my deck during the eclipse, and possibly it got stolen. I don't know. I can't find it. <laughs> but uh, I will buy another tripod shortly, so uh, just bear with me this, maybe th this or second last time. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to find one. Anyway, um, I am running the stable release of 0 0.2, and there hasn't been a lot of changes since the last video I did, uh, since we're now able to cut and paste and put units into a mixer. Uh, the two notable changes I can think of are, we now have contextual scopes in the units, and what that means is, let's say I add a unit um, that has some parameters. Now, any one of these values, if I select, let's say, the wet balance, and then I touch that again, we get a full scope of the signal output of that unit. So you can adjust this parameter and just see what the output waveform is doing. And it applies to anything. So I can see what the volt per octave is doing, you know, if I'm, if I'm modifying that value. And that applies to almost all the... Uh, all these sort of faders in any unit. Um, the other one, which I thought was interesting, is now the offset unit is modulatable. Uh, before, this was a set and forget parameter. You'd basically just introduce an offset to your CV, and that was it. It was sort of a set and forget thing. But now, we can actually go in here and modulate that, uh, that offset amount from any source. It could be an oscillator, it could even be an audio signal. Uh, whatever you want. So I uh, thought I'd just uh, play with that and see what we could uh, use with a modulatable offset. So let's just go to channel one. I already have um, a process sort of set up here. And if you can remember back to other videos I've made using the grains unit, if you have a grains unit running and triggering, um, if you sweep the start parameter with a saw oscillator, you get sort of a linear shift in time. So if you run that oscillator slow enough, you basically have just audio playback sweeping um, in, in a linear fashion. So I recorded a file, and it's just me counting one, two, three, four, and I have this saw wave um, sweeping the start time of the screens unit. So what we get is just audio. Oop, let me change the pitch. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So if I speed up this oscillator, it's just scanning through that start point faster, right? And if I slow it down, it sort of almost sounds like time expansion. And based on the duration of the get of the grain, it sort of makes all those little grains connect into this sort of gooey sound. But I wanted to try and um, get something beyond this uh, sort of start to finish kind of linear sweep. I want to be able to adjust the start and end time uh, dynamically. and. The problem before is, I mean, this isn't just two markers, it's basically a saw waveform, right? So you have to be able to, you know, pick where the lowest part of the waveform starts and where the highest part of the waveform ends. So let me show you what I came up with here. And I'm sure there's more than one way to do this, but uh, this is just how I was able to figure it out. So I'm gonna go into my start um, parameter of this manual grams. We'll go into the modulation chain so there's my saw wave, and I'm just going to speed it up for now so you can see the entire wave. There we go. So the idea here is, I want, if I want to be able to change the start time of this sample, I want to be able to, to increase that value, but I don't want that value to change. So there's a bit of math that had to happen here, and let me just show you how I approached it. So. Um, the zero line is anything below that's a negative value. 
Uh, above that's a positive value. So I introduced a fixed offset of 0.5 just to be able to shift that waveform up into a positive range. And then my idea for to affect the length of the actual file, I just added a VCA. And what that's doing is smooshing that waveform. So that's that's sort that's sort of solving one of the problems. So I'm able to lower I, I'm able to lower the length, but I want what I want to be able to do is increase the starting position because right now it's still starting from zero. So if we look if we look back, see how it's 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 only about halfway now. You can sort of see it updating on the fly. So I want to be able to basically take that and shift it higher so my start point isn't right at the bottom. So the way I did that is a modulatable offset. So I have a fader called start um, and I'm basically modulating that on the fly. So you can see this LS1 light strip is increasing that value and at the end of the day, oops, if we look at that, that start position now, notice how it's, the bottom part of it is increasing. Now, you might be wondering, well, wait a minute, if that's a set, if this length is like a set amount, how come it's still able to smoosh properly? Like how come the upper part of it isn't shifting out of bounds. Um, the way I achieved that is um, just with some math actually, but using, uh, where is it? Let me find it. I think it's in here. Yeah, so basically to, to make it, make the parameter not jump out of bounds, I've taken my length CV and I've introduced a negative version of the start. So it's basically the math of it is the length take away the start offset and that way we don't jump out of bounds. So here's my length and if I increase the start offset notice the top of it isn't flying vertically out into outer space. If I didn't have that mixer subtracting that start value the top part of it would just fly off. So that's sort of how I've come up with my sort of scaling, I guess you could call it. And if we look at the waveform, here it is. So there's my length, and it's just adjusting the height. And then my, my, off, my start is shifting the bottom part of it, but based on that sort of mixer CV math, it's keeping the top part of it in the exact same position. I, I hope I'm explaining this properly because it's it, it was sort of tricky to figure out because I'm not a, a mathematician or I don't know sometimes I don't feel that smart anyway <laughs> so at the end of the day if we listen to this let's hear what it sounds like affecting audio so Two, And the interesting thing is, because um, this isn't like fixed math variables and it's actually CV, if I actually sort of put these opposite of each other, like I have a higher start point and a lower length, the waveform will actually flip backwards. <laughs> Which is kind of weird. So this isn't too interesting on me counting, 
But what if I add something cooler? Like a here's a waveform I actually made on the 301. And let's see what this sounds like. So I'm going to speed this up. So you get some like pretty cool sort of erratic results um, if you're making like textures and clouds and stuff like that. And for me, this unit is uh, within a custom unit. So I've added some additional things here. Like here's my start and length. And I have this uh, toggle control called track. And I have it so if I press that track parameter, it's basically turning off the track and hold and it will lock the uh, grain position wherever it last was. So, so you just get that sort of static grain at that exact position. So these are basically disengaged. I can still adjust the actual uh, speed, but that probably doesn't matter. But yeah, so just a, another way to uh, to adjust things, and uh, I, I think the uh, modula modulatable offset control will prove very useful for a whole bunch of different applications. This is for me. This is actually the first time I've used that. Well, been able to use that, but act to actually do something involving some actual CD math, and it basically it was to, you know, subtract this value or this value from that value, and then sending that to another parameter. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, if this video is at all convoluted, uh, please drop me a message because uh, I think this one, maybe I should have made a script first. But uh, anyway, any questions? Yeah, let me know. Okay, take it easy. Bye.